Welcome to the demonstration of a decoding method that I have not yet shown on my channel. I am doing this in a response to a request from one of my viewers, Anfin Torstein, who was curious to see the decoding knife attack on a combination padlock. So usually when I get my hands on a combination padlock, I try to decode it by pulling... Ah, you have to lock it back up to demonstrate. So uh, by pulling on the shackle and trying to find binding wheels. So um, there is quite a um, huge number of locks that are susceptible to this attack. You pull on the shackle, the inner mechanism will start binding one or more wheels. You will find resistance. You change the position of the wheels, you turn it, uh, you will feel a difference um, in the resistance depending on which number you are and so you will sooner or later find the gates on the inner wheels and then the lock will open. Not so on this lock, when you pull on the shackle you find no wheel binding. So the wheels, no matter how hard you pull on the shackle, the wheels still spin freely without any resistance. And that's because the inner mechanism cannot be tensioned by pulling on the shackle. So I will show you how this looks on the locking bolt and you will understand. Uh, you have seen when I have the right code and I pull while I change the wheels to the right code on the shackle, like so, shackle will not open. You have to release the shackle and then it will open. And that's because we've got a rectangular cutout on the shackle on both sides actually. And in this cutout goes the, the locking bar. And now you can understand when you pull on the shackle in this direction you will not tension the locking mechanism you will only uh, pull this locking bar upwards in order to be able to tension the locking mechanism you would need to push inwards which you cannot achieve by pulling on the shackle so that's the reason why this type of lock or these types of locks cannot be um, decoded by pulling on the shackle. Inside this lock is something like a, a fork or um, a plate with prongs and these prongs or this, this plate as a whole has a little spring to it um, that pushes it against the inner wheels. And the inner wheels are not perfectly round, they have a flat part and when all the wheels are aligned uh, so that the flat parts are at the place where these prongs are, the whole uh, plate in this lock can fall down and give the way free for the mechanism so that the shackle can be pulled out. The spring tension on this inner part is however not strong enough that you would feel um, a resistance or a change of resistance when you turn the wheels depending on its position. So I think the resistance or the friction on the wheels and other obstacles are much bigger than the uh, internal spring would, would give you um, kind of feedback. So that's not an option, so I think you will not be able to, to feel anything when you turn the wheels. Um, but there is another way to decode these locks and this is by using a very thin decoding knife. And this is a Sparrows Ultra decoding knife that has a, a width um, of about uh, 0.2 millimeters. So this lock is susceptible to this decoding attack and that's because, first of all, the gaps here, left and right from the outer wheels, are pretty wide. So you can easily fit in this decoding knife and feel what's going on inside. And second, the inner wheels are not shielded or are not protected so that you can feel when the flat part comes. So let me demonstrate this to you by changing the combination and decoding the lock. So for changing the combination you have to turn the shackle at 180 degree, push it down and then you can shuffle the wheels 
just make sure that we are at a number and not in between two numbers. So, close the lock again and shuffle the wheels again. So now the a new code is installed and I don't know the code. Let's decode it. Uh, on this lock, the the inner wheel has the flat part on on this side, so I stick in the knife on that side and and, n and not on this side. Um, but of course, if you have a new lock, you have to test both sides and see which side has the flat part. So let's yeah, and I um, use this this edge here. I, I don't I don't uh, pull it, um, turn it like this. I turn it like that so that I have this uh, sharp uh, edge here uh, on the wheel, on the inner wheel, and can easily see or feel if there is a change. So here everything is, is flat or is, is smooth. I change it by one number. Okay. Here is a, a difference now. I go to seven. Yeah. Here it's very very obvious. I think we found the place where the flat part begins or where we have a gap or a, a gate depending on the uh, internal mechanism. Okay, let's continue with the next. That was two. Okay. Three or four. I want to make sure that the same type of feedback um, is on both wheels at the same place. Okay, I think it's um, six. Okay, now we've got four, I believe. Yep, four. Here maybe eight or nine. I think it's nine. Okay, let's check again. Nine, four, three, and okay, and six. Now the flat part is around here, but of course it needs to be somewhere inside the lock and you have to now change every wheel by one and see if the lock opens as you don't know the exact place where the flat part has to be Not yet open. Getting nervous. I think we are wrong with at least one of the wheels. I think we started with this setup, so let's try again.
Okay, now that was eight, two, three, one, two, three, one, two, three, one, two, three. I think it's safe to start with an offset of three. open all right <laughs> so it requires a little bit of fiddling uh, to get the right feeling where the flat part begins but now you have seen uh, the lock is open and the method was successfully applied wow <laughs> I was nervous now all right so I hope you um, this clarifies how the uh, feeler gauge attack works and um, yeah that's it. Um, Talampik again, thanks again uh, for this wonderful luck and uh, everybody else. Thank you very much for watching. Happy picking and bye bye.